It's been a while since I made a video like this. Hey, today we're gonna be talking about gear, live streaming gear. Basically, it's a fun exercise of brainstorming of, you know, what type of gear would I recommend for people at different stages? When it comes to the gear category, we're gonna have audio, lighting, video, cameras and such, and then utility and accessories. We're gonna separate all of that into collections, beginner, intermediate, semi-pro, and then full-time. Now again, keep in mind, to me, this is basically a brainstorming exercise. This is not like a full list of absolutely everything you need. Still do your research if you plan on buying anything. That being said, let's get a quick message from our sponsor and then we can begin. And this video is sponsored by Own Pro. Own Pro is known to give you overlays, alerts, widgets, everything you need to start your stream, but they just came up with something pretty awesome. They just dropped a feature that allows your viewers to trigger sound alerts, but also visual alerts that will show up on your screen, not just in OBS, not just on stream, but on your whole monitor. Basically, you want to find this extension on Twitch and the installation is pretty easy. You'll need to connect to your own pro account and configure the extension from there. Add a browser source for the sound alerts, then choose if you want sound only or also the visuals. You will need to download and install the software for the visuals. It installed super fast. Now, since it's showing on your screen, if you're not using display capture, you will need to add an additional browser source link so they can see it too. All right, let's add it as a panel. Then pick the effects that you would like to make available to your viewers. You can even preview them. Drag them to extension to add them to the extension. So it'll look like this and drag them to the bottom for channel point rewards and it'll show up here. And if you need any help, check out the quick setup guide. So click the link in the description and set it up for your stream. So basically what I did is go to my throne storefront and create a bunch of collections. Then I can fill them with products and we're gonna go through them together. Yes, you can find this at throne.com slash guy level slash shop. And let's start with the beginner collection. All right, when it comes to audio, we're gonna have the Fifine K669B, and this is a great starter microphone for about 30 bucks right now. It is USB. I believe I reviewed this one or something similar. Basically, Fifine is a pretty good company when it comes to making cheap microphones. The only thing you need to know is that the membrane is pretty sensitive, so you can easily get this to saturate, so you're gonna have to basically play around with that little dial with your windows volume and also the distance. You cannot be too close from it, but you cannot be too far otherwise it's gonna pick, pick up some reverb all right since i want to give you the choice i also have a kit with the mauno auA 4 and this is a mic that i personally used for years a lot of my youtube videos are with using this mic basically and the kit allows you to get the mic arm and then you get like the little beanie you get the pop filter and you get some um velcro cable management things it's also a USB mic and it sounds great. Honestly, I don't even have like a downside to this mic. It's just a great USB mic. And for about 60 bucks, you get all of that and basically your audio is ready. If you're starting out, you don't have to use the pop filter. It's clunky and annoying to use. Just put the beanie on top of it and you're good. This one is not that sensitive to um, pops anyways, which is funny because you're going to hear some pops on this mic since I removed the beanie. All right. For lighting, if you want like a proper key light that you can uh, put on your desk and basically bounce off the wall or put on a tripod and bounce off the wall so you can have kind of like what I have right now, which is like an Elgato key light bouncing off the wall. You can do that by using a panel light. Do not use a, a ring light because there are no cheap ring lights that will really give you the effect that you want. So we're gonna skip the idea of ring lights. We're gonna go for a bounce, soft, panel light and this is going to be the best bang for your buck while also delivering pretty much professional quality um, lighting. $57 is pretty decent and you might want to have it directly at you. Basically play around with it but this should be sufficient to give you good face light. Newer has pretty cheap and pretty decent quality products. It's not my favorite brand but sometimes if you're trying to go low 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 budget it's pretty much inevitable. Inevitable, inevitable. Then here we have a pair of clamp lights. Basically, this is a great way to start your setup. Those don't come with the bulb or anything, but that little clamp here allows you to basically strap it and, and fasten it to anything. When it comes to light bulbs, you can put whatever you want in it. I would advise for a face light, you can put like an LED white light in there and then put some parchment paper, bounce it out, and it's, it's gonna be indistinguishable from pretty much what I have right now with like a $200 setup and it's 16 bucks, okay? But if you're gonna be using incandescent lights, Keep that in mind, incandescence, fire, <laughs> be careful. Since you have two of them, what I would do is basically buy a cheap RGB light or, you know, just a colored light bulb and put one behind me pointing towards me to give me that backlight that you can see like uh, right there <laughs> on my shoulder and stuff. Those are actually used on independent film sets all the time. 
So don't think for a second that just because it's cheap, it's not going to be good light. When it comes to the camera, I put the Logitech C920. It's pretty hard to go without this one. $60, I think it's a fair price, at least on this link. Try not to buy it higher than that. It's not worth higher than that. It wasn't higher than that before COVID. So don't get scammed. Like 80, 100 bucks I've seen it at. Do not buy it at this price. Buy it used or renewed if you have to. Other than that, pretty decent camera. Doesn't really handle color that well. But if you have enough lights and you can lower the exposure, it actually reveals a pretty good quality. Also, it has great close focus. So if you're controlling the focus manually and you want to show some objects or even film some uh, unboxing or product reviews, it can look really, really good. 1080p 30 FPS for live streaming. I think it's pretty decent. Then we have the lower quality and honestly, you cannot go any lower than that. It's the Logitech C270 and this is a 720p 30 FPS webcam. Again, you have to throw a lot of light at it. It doesn't handle color that well, but the image can be pretty decent, especially if you're already streaming at 720p. This one is 720p you're good. But again, with the lighting setup, you're going to have to play around with it in order to have the best quality that you can. Don't expect miracles. This is a $20 webcam. Oh, I forgot to say that Logitech is kind of inconvenient. Every time you reboot your computer or you restart OBS, you're going to have to play around with the settings. But if you learn them, you can do it pretty fast. Let's go to a uh, utility or accessory or is, oh, wait, why do I have more lights here? Anyways, let's go with this first for your background light. I do not want to talk about like decoration light. I just want to talk about overall background light. You can see how my room is completely purple right now. Guess what? I'm using one of those What I'm using an Olafus 50 watt one, but those are two 30 watt ones and they are controllable with your smartphone. I don't even have that feature on mine. Those are meant for outdoors. Those are RGB floodlights, but they look great inside and they're super cheap. They are the best bang for your buck. If you're thinking about something like a Philips Hue, like single light bulb, that's going to run you $50. Those are nine watts. So think about the difference in, in output. So one single Philips Hue nine watt light bulb could not light up my whole room, but somehow a single 50 watt can. The blue light you're seeing right now is one that I have exclusively for my hair. If I turn it off, there it is. So even if you have a bunch of decoration lights, it's not going to fill the room with lights. It's not going to flood the room with lights, but a one single 50 watt RGB floodlight. And this is what it does. You add a second one pointing at you. And this is what you get. So the reason why I put two 30 watt ones is because this is going to be pretty bright if you are going with a low budget, meaning that you're streaming with a webcam. This is already like super duper bright. It's really going to flood the room. You probably don't even need two of them, but for 25 bucks and it's smartphone controlled, you kind of can't do better. All right. Accessories. If you decide to go with the five fine K six, whatever, um, I advise you go with the toner T20. This is my favorite cheap accessory kit for microphones because this just looked like any cheapo mic arm, but it is not. It has three arms at the bottom here and I personally tested it and this thing can hold anything you throw at it. I literally put some weights, some workout weights on it and I think I went up to four kilos before it even budged. So let's say, for example, you made the mistake of buying a blue Yeti and it's super heavy and you can't find a mic arm that won't break under it. This one will hold. Also, it's pretty cool that it comes with accessories. You get the pop filter. Don't use that. You get the converter here. You get the mic beanie that I like to call. You get the dy dynamic mic holder and then you have the cable management straps. So I personally tested this one. I have a review. Go check it out here. I added uh, those two light stands. You don't need two of them, but if you're buying the newer light, you're going to need it. At some point, even if you want to put your, I don't know, maybe your webcam onto it, maybe you want to put one of the lights, this is going to be complicated because I had to struggle to put those ones, but it's cool to have light stands and those are light stands. Those are not tripods. If you type tripod, you're, you're going to spend a lot of money. If you buy a single one, it's going to be 20 bucks. So might as well put two for 38 again, newer, not my favorite brand, but if you want to go cheap, sometimes you can't avoid it. All right. And I thought someone's going to be like, yeah, but I want to stream my switch to my, to my PC. I want to stream my, my console. Uh, go with a cheap HDMI, HDMI video capture. This one, if you're playing single player games, this is fine. It is, it says 4K, but it's actually 1080p, I believe 60 FPS output. So keep in mind, there's no pass through. There's also no extra audio. So you can't be with your friends in, in party chat and use this. So this might be good for a device that already has a screen or if you plug it into an HDMI splitter. Definitely not the best capture card, but the cheapest that you're going to find. Also, if you're using it, let's say with a DSLR, then this is perfect, right? Let's say your uncle is like, well, I have this old DSLR and it 
turns out that it has clean HDMI output. Anyways, let's go back and let's go to intermediate. If I even wrote that right. And if we scroll down, now we're going to step it up a notch. We're going to go with the Elgato Wave 3 for one reason only because it seems to be the exact same price as the Elgato Wave 1 for some reason. There isn't that much difference in my opinion between the Wave 1 and the Wave 3. I would recommend if you're starting out to go with the Wave 1 if you can find it less than 100 bucks. When it goes on sale, last time I think it was 60 bucks or something like that, great price, get the Wave 1. But if not, and you want something right now, get the Wave 3. You can get a kit if you want. I don't think all of that is necessary. It handles everything really well. This is a great, this is my favorite USB microphone. Plus it gives you access to the Elgato software, which allows you to add your own VST plugins, meaning that if you're worried about, oh, is the mic gonna pick up noise or whatever, you don't worry about that because software is gonna take care of all of it. Well, if you are knowledgeable or if you just watch my videos. <laughs> But yeah, look at that. Elgato Wave 1, $127. Elgato Wave 3, $185. And then Elgato Wave 3, $117. Is this refurbished or renewed? Doesn't matter. Get this one if you're gonna get one. Second mic I put here is the HyperX Quadcast because everyone loves it. Honestly, I haven't tested this mic. I have friends who use it and they sound great. Uh, it looks good. It has RGB, so this is put in by popular demand pretty much. 139 bucks, pretty decent, has its own chalk mount even when it's standing on the desk. So it's pretty much like usable. I would still advise get a stand, right? But pretty decent mic overall with the tap mute and all the fancy features that really don't matter. <laughs> all right, for lighting, what do we have? Here I put the Elgato Key Light Air, which is, <laughs> It's kind of expensive, I'm not gonna lie, but Elgato, when it comes to lighting, they have the high CRI, it's not gonna flicker on camera, it is high quality lighting for video production, basically. Also, Elgato lights tend to be super bright, so you really don't have to worry. 1400 lumens is more than enough that you can ever ask for. You blast that directly to your face and then you lower the exposure on the C920, for example, you're gonna have great quality, I'm, I'm telling you. So, I haven't tested this one personally, but I have the Key Light and I have the Key Light Mini and they're all like great, great products. Also, I'm not gonna lie, I'm also trying to ease you into the Elgato ecosystem because you're gonna see that later on if you plan to be just a live streamer It's good to have like a stream deck where you can control your lights You can control your mic you can control your interface you can control your music and all of that So it's good to have a lot of products from the same company in that way because I don't know any other company that has That much gear intertwined like that, but in order to give you some choice We also have a Ulanzi light now I personally tested Ulanzi products and as cheap as they are and they're not like super cheap But they are high quality if I'm going for cheap stuff when it comes to audio video, I really trust Yulanzi because I am using some of their products right now. I believe the desk mount for my camera, also the desk mount for my lights, both Yulanzi. So I found out that they have a light that is kind of similar to the Keylight Air. You know, they're not gonna immediately tell you the brightness. <laughs> It's probably lower than the Elgato one, but it's also like half the price. So you get color adjustment, you get brightness adjustment. I haven't tested this product. I really don't know how bright it is, but for that price, I cannot imagine it being like super duper dim. It is 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So like this and then like that. Again, that would be something that I would bounce off the wall or probably put a sheet of parchment paper over it to, to diffuse it a little bit. Yulanzi, if you're watching, send me this light. I want to test it myself. It comes on a light stand that sits on your table so you don't have to buy extra tripods for it or extra light stands for it. And then for the background this time, since we're intermediate, maybe you want to spend more money or maybe you want to make sure that you go for lights that are like, you know, made for video because those are RGB projectors, depending on the color that I pick, I'm gonna have some flickers with the camera. Sometimes it's a hassle. You have to basically uh, tinker with it. Uh, those lights, you will not. I tried to avoid going with newer this time. We were going with Sweetie. I haven't tested this personally, but high CRI, made for video, RGB, and it's a panel. So you will, I, I believe it doesn't come with a nightstand. No, it doesn't. So you will need a, a light stand for that. Did I say nightstand at some point? <laughs> We're still in intermediate, so honestly, I would still recommend you go with Olafus RGB. Olafus is one of the one of the lights that I actually use right now. Forty two dollars, fifty watt. This is as bright as I have. So yeah, since I personally tested them, and this is gonna be on my tech channel, you need to go check it out. But here you get a pair of those, and you can do whatever you want. You can do like me, where you have one going towards you, and then one going towards the room, or you can do like both sides of the room, so you can have like a multicolor shift. Again, those are outdoor lights. They are not meant to be on camera initially. That means that if you're thinking, oh, I want, like, I'm gonna buy this so I can get pink, uh, maybe pink is not compatible with your camera, okay? So keep that in mind. If you are not versatile, 
when it comes to color accuracy and things like that. I am very lucky that this purple works. I also play around with my white balance on my camera to make it work with my own color scheme. But for this price, your room instantly turns into like a colored gaming room, basically. And then we have the Logitech uh, Brio 4K. To be completely fair with you, um, most people that use this camera, I don't see a huge difference. I, I haven't tested it myself, but I don't see a huge difference between the, the C it's basically the C920 with more pixels, right? <laughs> All the Brio users are going to be so offended, but it's more expensive. It is a 4K camera. It is not 60 FPS, but you can do 1080p at 60 FPS. So, so for people who stream at 1080p, 60 FPS, this is, this is great. So overall, I would say like better than the C920 when it comes to resolution, but not necessarily when it comes to like the sensor, it's not like doesn't have like a higher dynamic range or anything but if you have proper lighting it will still look really good then we go with a webcam that does 1080p 60 fps nothing higher that doesn't have all the stuff like oh a mic with noise canceling we don't need a mic on a webcam anyways this is the elgato face cam i personally tested that one uh it looks better than every other webcam i'll, I'll, I'll say it right now that i tested at least that i tested but um there are some caveats it doesn't have any focus the focus is fixed it's pretty good actually i was so scared of not being in focus it's pretty decent it kind of like it's kind of around where you would be but if you put something close to the camera for example it's not gonna get in focus like this right if you pair it with software like the nvidia video suite or whatever they have where you can blur the background a little bit and things like that you can have a really really decent looking quality for only 129 dollars it is kind of hard to top the quality without going uh, with a DSLR, unless we're talking about the Elgato Facecam Pro that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay, for mic arm, I went for a low profile Ulanzi one. Again, Ulanzi, I trust them. They make quality products. Uh, this is $39, so we're getting like a, you know, we're spending quite a bit of money when it comes to accessories, but low profile is what I'm using right now, except I'm using the Elgato LP mount. I cannot go back. It, it, it changed my life and how I set up everything. I'm tired of having like microphone stands that come up and then go down and all of that. And then they have to squeeze between my, my screens or they have to go in front of my screen. Low profile is the way to go. And it's super easy to basically uh, put away. This one has an adapter. Don't worry about that. There you go. It has all the adapters, even a quarter inch, which is universal. You can even put a camera on there if you want to. Elgato also gives you quarter inch adapters with their mics, which is super cool. I'm glad that mic companies are starting to do this more. Here we do have an overhead here if you really want to go with it. I picked this one just because it has cable management and it looks kind of cool. We are an intermediate uh, collection, basically. We don't want anything to look cheap. And by we, I mean you. If it was me, I, I don't care. As long as the stream cannot see it, my setup can, made, can be made out of cardboard. But I understand people like to buy nice stuff for themselves. So we have this one. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. It does show a blue Yeti here. It does show a bunch of Yetis here, but you know. I haven't tested it personally. I couldn't tell you. The Yeti is so heavy for no reason too. So that's cool. They show you a bunch of popular mics that it's compatible with. $59. That's pretty nice. And then this is the part since, you know, we're getting intermediate. Maybe you want to buy stuff that make your life a little easier. This is not something that will change your stream drastically. Unfortunately, currently unavailable. But it's cool to um, basically discover the software with Elgato and start controlling stuff, especially if you're going to buy like the key light air. You can control it with that. You can um, control the brightness. You can basically turn it on and off. It, and if on top of that, you're also getting the Elgato Wave 3, you can mute it. You can turn it on. You can you can do so much. Basically, you're getting into the Elgato ecosystem. Boom. When it comes to capture card, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Like I just put it there because I'm like, yeah, someone is going to bother me with it. But we have the Pango 4K pass through. 4K pass through doesn't mean that that you can stream at 4K. It means that you can stream at 1080p 60 FPS, but um, you can look at the footage on another TV and it's still gonna be 4K basically. It's just pass through, right? And this is one that I tested myself. When I tested it the first time, it had zero lag to the point where I was playing the game through OBS directly. Zero lag, uh, full body is like metal. It doesn't get hot. It's tiny, it fits in your pocket. It's it's great. It's the it's one of the best capture cards I tested before the Elgato capture card called X Elgato Capture X. I will get into that, <laughs> but really good. Pengo pretty good at doing HDMI stuff. I vouch for them because I tested them. I believe I'm using a Pengo. I'm I'm using this one for my camera right now, and it's just plugged in and it's just chilling. No issues whatsoever. Also, 1080p 60 FPS, less than a hundred dollars. 
Sign me up. Okay, okay, that was intermediate. Let's go to semi-pro. Again, those lists don't have every single thing that you need. Still do your research. There's probably a bunch of accessories that you're gonna need. For this one, we went XLR with the Elgato Wave XLR mixer. This is what I'm using right now with the Elgato Wave DX as my mic. It is a pretty, pretty, de wait, did I call it a mixer? It is a pretty, pretty decent mic amplification interface that is USB. It turns every mic into USB as Harris Heller said. It's nice, I like the controls. You can control the mic, you have the monitor, and then you have the mix. It gives 48 volts to any microphone that requires it. And it has the capacitive touch on top of it where you can mute it, bop, bop. I thought I was never gonna use this. I use it a lot and I like slapping the top of it. Pretty decent, $159. The reason why you want this is because you can switch out your mic whenever you feel like it. There's a brand new mic that has like a more boomy sound Sound or, a, or a better quality, you wanna switch it up, you can do it while keeping your audio interface. Pretty nice. Now I put the Elgato Wave DX, not because it's the best mic, but mostly because it's one of the cheapest mics that you can actually buy that is high quality for the Wave XLR. It is decent, not necessarily my favorite mic that I've tested, but it's Elgato's first dynamic mic and dynamic mics tend to be of better use when it comes to noise uh, handling for live streamers. If I, if you're slamming on your keyboard and stuff like that, you get a little close to the dynamic mic and it will handle noise like a champ. Oh, also try to get the, get it with the Wave DX cable. Uh, Wave DX cable is like 20 bucks and it's, um, it's like braided cable. It's pretty decent. That being said though, I have been getting a little bit of interference. I've been getting a little bit of bzz, bzz. I don't know exactly if it's coming from the mic, if it's coming from the cable, if it's coming from the Wave XLR, or if it's coming from my computer. I do need to troubleshoot that. But other than that, I didn't have any issues with it at all. I barely use the software, but I did make a video on all of the VST plugins that you can use to make this mic sound exactly like you wanted to. But it's very versatile, all right? If you wanna go a little higher quality, in my opinion, you can go with the Audio Technica. You can go with a, you know, with a proper audio brand, uh, and they have a mic called the AT2040. And this one is pretty much made for podcasting. It is a hypercardioid dynamic microphone. So make sure you watch some reviews to actually hear how it sounds compared to the Wave DX. But this is one of the options you have. Also $99. We are not breaking the bank here. When it comes to lights here, we have the Elgato key light. Again, that's the one that I'm using. I do have a, a an extra ring light to put more emphasis on this side of my face. If I turn off the ring light, you can see that that my, that my key light is super duper soft. That's because it's half bouncing off the wall to come to my face here to kind of contrast the left side where I have this harsh RGB light bouncing off of me. Anyways, 149 bucks, pretty expensive for a single light, but this is very, very bright. This is very color accurate, so you're you're not gonna have those green tones or those weird blue tones. It is definitely a professional light, and I've been using mine for, what, a year, two years now? Comes with a table clamp, so there's no worries at all. You don't even need a light stand. It's been great. And of course, you can control it with your stream deck. You can control it with the, they even have an app. Uh, you can control it through Wi-Fi. I have it plugged into a smart switch, so I can ask my Alexa to basically turn it off. It's great, absolutely vouch for this one. No issues whatsoever, I love it. Then we are actually going to go with a ring light here. That is if you want to do the ring light effect, right? Where your eyes have that little ring and you're doing like a beauty type of lighting. If that's not the case, if you're not gonna use it with the camera in the middle of it, do not buy a ring light. Ring lights are more expensive because they are in a ring shape and they are in a ring shape to create a specific effect. If you already have a ring light and you do not use it that way and use it as a like, well, like I'm using this one right now, that's totally fine, but do not buy it for that purpose, okay? This is great if you're doing makeup, if you, you know, you wanna look really, really pretty, this is one of the, well, this is the best ring light I've ever tested and I have a bunch of them. <laughs> the light is super soft, even though it's super bright. You can change the color temperature. The light is super accurate. It's very, very, very bright. Again, I don't even think you can find a better ring light than the Elgato ring light. Uh, get the big one, 17 inches. I think that's the big one. They don't have a small one anyways. This one can also be controlled through Wi-Fi or there's also physical buttons on it, which is Really good, which I wish the key light would have. It comes with a bunch of accessories, the table clamp, and then the ball head here. So that is a particular thing. Now for background light, we went with GVM, which is a pretty good brand when it comes to professional studio lighting and stuff like that. Then this one is RGB, smartphone controlled, and it comes with their own light stand and even a case. But this is the part where, you know, you can get rid of your <laughs> floodlights. I'm never going to get rid of my floodlights. But anyways, you can have those on a light stand, one pointing towards the background, one pointing towards you, one pointing towards you, or one pointing towards 
are both pointing towards the background to create like a double color effect, but very versatile. I haven't tested them. I haven't tested them personally, but I watch a bunch of reviews and GVM seems to be making good stuff. All right, when it comes to camera here, it got a little difficult. We have the Elgato Facecam Pro, which is not available right now. Uh, it's kind of a rare webcam to find, but uh, when it comes to webcams, so you just plug it, it's USB-C to USB-C, you plug it in and it works and it looks pretty great. I recently made a, vid a video about it, so you can check that out to see the quality. I don't think you can get any better than this unless, you know, another company sends me something else. But this is what I recommend if you're trying to get to pro without wanting to go with a mirrorless or DSLR. So uh, for live streaming, more than enough, more than enough. It has a bunch of features. It is 4K 60 FPS, by the way, which is the highest we've found here so far. Pro, seriously, pro. Definitely between the face cam and the face cam pro, there's a huge difference. You're going to you're going to see it immediately. So it does deserve the name Pro. As I said in my review, go watch my review. Then here I put this Sony ZV-1. I don't think that should go into intermediate or where are we? We are semi-pro right now. What am I saying? So Sony ZV-1, definitely, I feel kind of bad because it's kind of, it's getting super expensive, super fast, but this is what I use. This is the camera that I'm using right now. That's the Sony ZV-1. It has a 24 millimeter uh, lens. It is a great camera like for vlogging. That's why I bought, that's why I bought it for. That's what I bought it for, but then COVID happened, so there was there wasn't much traveling or anything. Uh, it does 4K HDR. Uh, it films up to 120 frames per second, I think. So you can do like cool slow mo stuff if you're doing like product reviews or or whatever you're filming. So it's a super super versatile camera, but it is not the best because Sony came up with more cameras after it came out. Just wanted to put it in there because um, it's a pretty decent camera. The quality is great. The autofocus is one of my favorite things. It is super responsive and it doesn't me miss a beat. You can use it to take photos and uh, you can film 4K HDR videos with it. So also doesn't get that hot. I went to bed once and well, multiple times actually, and it was on and it just handled it like a champ. You shouldn't be doing that. But hey, mine is still alive. The Sony Alpha ZV E10 is what I would recommend if you're going higher. Usually this is gonna be way more expensive. It is pretty much the same camera, except you can swap the lens. So you can buy a better lens and have a better bokeh, you know, the background being blurry and stuff like that. You can spend more money and make it more customizable. And the idea of being able to change lenses, meaning that you can change um, the, the look of the image which is not something that I can do with mine. Now, once we get into, you know, interchangeable lenses, we're gonna see that lenses can get super expensive and uh, we're getting higher in price, right? Anyways, after that, I would recommend you, this is the part where I would recommend you to get a full Elgato Stream Deck. Get the Stream Deck 2 because it's more robust. You can uh, unplug the USB if you're not using it and it has this light stand that is not adjustable, but it's pretty cool and it actually holds it up next to the Stream Deck Plus and the Wave XLR, like the same angle. So you can have a cool thing going on if you have a bunch of Elgato products. Uh, the faceplate is something that you can change even though they don't really advertise it here, but sometimes they come with faceplates uh, so you can turn it into white. So you can have different designs basically on the faceplate. One thing to keep in mind though with the Stream Deck is that I would advise you use it if you are that kind of Stream Deck user. If you're that kind of Stream Deck user, so from time to time you wanna change this, you wanna change that, you can also do it. But for me, for example, I use it with Premiere when I'm editing and I'm just like, it's a substitute to my keyboard. It has all my shortcuts and I can do everything I need. Super, super, super duper useful. But if you're that type of Stream Deck user, <laughs> I recommend you to go directly with the Stream Deck Plus because it's inclined, it is made for that basically. It's kind of like a, a dashboard type of Stream Deck. I recommend the normal Stream Deck as a as a micro keyboard type of stream deck. But anyways, at the end of the day, you use it however you, you see fit. Then when it comes to capture cards, we have the uh, Elgato HD 60 X external one. And I love this thing. This is like one of the one of the best ones. It is super tiny. I think I made a YouTube short about it or something. But yeah, this one is 4K 60 pass through, 4K 30 HDR 10 uh, capture and 1080p 60 FPS capture, which is like great for an external one. It's amazing. Get this for your games. It also has like the little audio plug here. Check it out. I did make a review, but I thought, I think it was like a, just an announcement review. It wasn't like in-depth review because I don't have any consoles. Then when it comes to microphones, I'm not a huge fan of spending a ton of money into microphone uh, arms, but Elgato has the Wave mic arm. I don't want to go into this kind of shape anymore, but it's there if you insist on getting it. Plus the Elgato arm has cable management. It has the logo if you want to flex that you have a whole Elgato thing. <laughs> 
but uh, it is, it's, a pre, it's a pretty good mic arm to be completely fair. The cable management alone is pretty cool. But we are in semi-pro. Technically, you've been making money with content at this point. You can, you can splurge a little bit. Then we have the LP arm, which is what I'm using right now. And as I said, I will not go back to normal mic arms anymore because this is so practical, so great. And it looks so good. Cable management integrated also. You can see the you can see the little holes here. Boom, boom. And then you just fold it to the side. I have mine on this side of the table. So I just fold it and it folds on the side of the table. I don't have it back near my monitor. Super duper practical. Anyways, here I put a power adapter, like a, a dummy battery for some reason. This one is compatible with uh, the A5100, which I haven't mentioned yet, but it's also compatible with the ZV-E10. So if you want, if you're wondering, oh, how do I make a camera that runs on batteries last forever? You would want something like that. If you're buying any other camera, look up their dummy batteries, basically. Then I have the Elgato uh, XLR cable. When this came out, people were like, wow, and I bet it's a hundred dollars. It's $19. Stop complaint it's braided xlr cable for 19 dollars, and it's shielded and it has gold pins it's pretty good that being said again i have been getting some interference recently but i don't know if it's coming from the mic the cable the wave xlr or my pc it's probably my pc because i never update anything <laughs> and that's it for the semi pro collection let's go to the full time and you know lower your expectations it's not gonna be <laughs> It's not going to be amazing or anything. We're still talking about gear for live streaming, not, you know, Hollywood production. I still have the Wave XLR, believe it or not, right? Except this time I also added uh, the Go XLR. So Wave XLR, again, great XLR solution. Since you can upgrade any mic into it, if you're a live streamer, you only need one uh, XLR port here. It's USB. And I totally forgot. I straight up, I, I the thing is in front of me right now. I totally forgot that there was like a, a jack here that you could that you could plug your headphone into. <laughs> Anyways, capacitive touch. You can you can mute uh, certain sources. It's great. Then we have the TC Helicon Go XLR. Personally, not a huge fan of this thing. Uh, I feel like it's a little over glorified, but I also heard that the preamps inside of them were really, really high quality. So if you want to plug a high quality microphone, I heard that this was good, but I heard $400 is a whole lot of money just to be able to basically flex and say that, oh, I can have some effects and some reverbs and press some buttons and there's a bunch of RGBs, but you do what you want with your money. If you feel like the preamps are worth it, do that. If you feel like you're actually going to use the soundboard and the vocal effects and all of that, do it. I personally have a bunch of friends that own this thing that spent all that money and never use any of those effects. If anything, every time there's an update, they are struggling with it. For my friends, at least it feels like it's more of a hassle than uh, something convenient. So spend your money how you feel like. I am a, I'm an Amazon affiliate. Uh, I probably should have said that in the beginning. I'm an Amazon affiliate. I'm also a uh, Throne affiliate. So I'm getting money if you click from, from this thing. Anyways, we have the Shure SM7B and this is what I call the Flex Microphone. Same thing. Buy this one, plug it into your... <laughs> Plug it into your Go XLR. Flex on them haters. Just make sure you use my affiliate link when you're buying it. I think it's a little overkill. I do like the little boomy sound that it has. So if it's on sale or if you have a grandma that doesn't know what to offer you for Christmas or something, definitely tell her, hey, put your pension into that gift so I can sound boomy for my two viewers. Is that too much? I was a little too much. Logitech also came out with a $300 microphone. I don't know what's going on, but um, I haven't tested this. I haven't watched a lot of reviews, but Logitech is popular. I know a lot of people have been talking about it, so I just put it in the list, right? From my experience, if I put anything that is super cheap but has high quality, people don't want it because they cannot flex with it. So here you go, the expensive and popular stuff. That being said, Logitech, if you're watching this, send me one of those mics so I can, uh, Test it. Internal shock mount sounds good to me, but also it's pretty cool to have dynamic mics like that. And the design looks pretty decent, not gonna lie. Alrighty, what do we have? Again, the key light. Whether you're pro or semi pro, I feel like the key light is definitely worth it. Again, if you're not going for beauty lights, do not go for ring lights, go for key lights. Buy more key lights if you have to. One thing I do have to say though is the idea of having two key lights like that on each side is not gonna look good. It's it's not gonna look good. You're gonna have flat lighting and it's gonna be too bright it's gonna be too harsh and you're gonna look horrible especially if you have darker skin like me you're gonna look like shinier than <laughs> i need to chill basically one will suffice if you have a white wall in front of you bounce it off of that to have super soft lighting so you can look good and then use just bright rgb projectors in the background so yeah all the content creators that you see um with two elgatos on their desk most of the time they don't use it when they're filming this is why you can see them in the shot literally there's a reason <laughs> 
but also in the advertisement you know there's a lot of you know those double lights and stuff like that don't do that cool thing that elgato did though is that on twitter they explained that you might want to lower the brightness on one of them so you can get a little bit of shadows in there a little bit of more dramatic lighting and i think that's cool but you know they still advertised it as oh you absolutely need two of them it's not true it's not true dramatic lighting is gonna look better anyways so one side bright the other side rgb and then i put this one just because i needed something other than you know the elgato one GVM, again, they make pretty good lighting. This is a soft box. This is going to take a whole lot of space, but it's versatile. You can use it for anything else. If you do like uh, short form content with your phone, this is going to look amazing. The Elgato key light clamps to your table. That doesn't mean it has to only stay on your table, but it's cool to have something that you can move around if for some reason you don't want to go with Elgato. And that's a horrible Photoshop here. That doesn't. Wow. <laughs> and then for RGB background, we have those triple RGB high CRI, so they're gonna look great on camera. Now we're spending a little bit more money, 379. Um, with three of them, you can have two for your background, one for your backlight. I think that's pretty cool. Backlight as in you're like towards you, okay? All of that is gonna be app controlled, so it's gonna be convenient. Hopefully you can control it with your home assistant. And if not, you at this point, professional, you should get a home assistant, something that you can just either either program to go off at a certain time or you can just be like, hey, do this, do that. I'm getting tired. Now we're going mirrorless. We're going mostly with Sony. We have the Sony a7 III. I don't own this camera. I, I hopefully will own it at some point. We're going to go with body only because we want a specific lens that's going to match what we want to do. The reason why you would go with this camera, for example, uh, instead of the ZV E10 or ZV E or ZV1 is if you really, really, really want to get that, you know, super bokeh look that you can see like the, those high end streamers have, right? Background is super blurry and it's beautiful. It's not like made in post processing. In that case, we would get the body. And of course, it's a great camera that you can use for everything. At this point, hopefully you use it for being a content creator in general, and not just as your streaming camera. Some people do that. Hey, if you make a bunch of money streaming, do whatever you want with your money. As I always say, we will get to the lens a little bit later. And then we have the Sony a6000. Again, this one is closer to the ZV-1, but again, interchangeable lens. Uh, this one is body only and it's renewed, but you're going to get high quality and all of that, especially when you slap the proper lens to it and the lens that i picked is the sigma 28 to 70 so you can zoom in basically so you can frame it the way you want and it's 2.8 when the aperture is 2.8 it lets a lot of light in and you're gonna get pretty good uh, pretty decent bokeh the background can be pretty um blurry basically there are other lenses if you really want to go with like that that really soft like portrait type of look uh you would want to go with like a 1.8 aperture but those lenses are easily <laughs> $2,000 and things like that. But we are in the pro section, so we're going to spend a lot of money, right? Even then, we're not going with the high end video quality stuff. We're still I'm still thinking, hey, don't spend that much money. You're only live streaming. But there you go. If you see some people with with impossibly high quality cameras and you know, it's not like some post processing stuff. This is most likely what they're using. They're using, uh, you know, a $2,000 camera or $1,000 camera with a nearly $1,000 lens that has a high aperture, or I would say a low number of aperture. Anyways, if you want to learn more then Google stuff, you know, learn about lenses and how the aperture affects your image and stuff. This is the part where I also put the Stream Deck Plus. Again, if you're that type of that type of user, this is a, I have it in front of me right now. So if I want to uh, turn down my volume, pause the music, uh, switch profiles and things like that, this is what I use it for. But I have the normal Stream Deck, well, the Stream Deck MK2 on the side. And this one is like my hands on Stream Deck for, you know, uh, pressing shortcuts and stuff like a tiny mic macro keyboard. Uh, this is great if you're live streaming and you want to control your music and things like that. So if you don't have any Stream Decks yet, think about what you're going to do with it. If you don't do video editing, uh, you might want to go with this one. But of course, since we are in the pro category, I advise you getting both an Elgato Stream Deck Plus, but also the Elgato Stream Deck XL. And now you have way more keys than I have <laughs> and you should be Gucci and you can use it however you feel like. For example, um, I personally feel like the normal Stream Deck is enough for using it in Premiere, for example, but I probably could fit way more shortcuts into this one and i would probably find it just as useful that being said though most of the people that have stream decks have like barely have one page full of 
shortcuts to be fair. And then here, what I did is put some Govi smart plugs. This is just like an ease of life type of thing. At this point, if you already have a home assistant, I think it's cool to basically automate your whole studio. I don't personally use those yet. I do have a pack of them that I'm gonna do for a review on the tech channel. Uh, but I use something similar, basically, that allows me to turn on and turn off a certain things in my place. I have one for my 3D printer. I have one for certain lights. Uh, anything that is not smart can become smart with this. But remember, it's just a switch. All right. And when it comes to capture card here, we have the Elgato Camlink. Wait, that's not the right thing showing up. We have the Camlink 4K and the Camlink Pro. So Camlink 4K is going to be this one. You would want to use that with your DSLR, for example, or your mirrorless camera. And then the Camlink Pro is what you're going to use for your console, for example, right? Because it's going to have um, up to four HDMI ports. So anything you want to bring in, if you have a two PC, right? In this case, like if you have a four PC setup, uh, plus your Xbox, plus your PS5 and all of that, you can plug it all at once. This is going inside of your computer. See what I meant about the double key light thing? This is not the most appealing lighting. You don't want the reason they don't really show you like the result, right? This does not look good anyways. And then I put another dummy battery that is compatible with the A7 III. Whew. And there you have it, a cool little exercise on, hey, what product would I recommend to people without going into too many details, depending on their situation as a content creator. This list could have had way many more products, but hey, I did this quickly and it gives you an opportunity to tell me in the comment section below what kind of products do you use? Uh, where do you feel like you would put yourself uh, as a beginner, intermediate, semi-pro or full-time? And how has that been working out for you? Again, there will be a link to the collection in the description. Also keep in mind that I am both in Amazon affiliate and a Throne affiliate. So if you get anything from that page, basically I'm getting a small commission. I am personally an advocate of buying stuff because you know how you're going to use them or you feel like they're actually going to be useful. But I am also not against people wanting to buy nice stuff for themselves, which is why I put a couple of products here that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to a friend, but I would definitely recommend to a stranger because in my experience, people in the streaming community are also some tech nerds <laughs> and sometimes they like to buy fancy stuff. So there you go. Thank you so, so much for watching. Go follow me on Twitch and I will see you next time. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.